Hey everyone, welcome to another Giddy Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. We have here today something very special. We have the Nook Glow Light Plus that just came out and the Kobo Glow HD, which has been out for the better half of the year. The purpose of today's video is to give you a side by side reading comparison, both with ebooks, PDF files, and to show you the UI. But first, Resolution's pretty well the same, 1448 by 1080. They both have e-ink card as screens, which is the latest generation tech from e-ink. So you won't really notice a lot of ghosting. Page turn speeds will be very fluid. Uh, the only difference really is the Kobo Glow HD has an infrared screen, whereas the Nook has a capacitive touchscreen display. And this is a few really direct benefits right off the bat is that you could be anywhere on this device and click the home button and go right back to the home screen. Whereas with the Kobo, it's software driven home button. So the home button sometimes changes depending where you are in the e-reader. They both have a one gigahertz processor. They have about 512 uh, MB of RAM. They, they're, both of these companies aren't really forthcoming which how much RAM they have, but it feels like it has 512 MB. Four gigs of memory. The Barnes & Noble limits you to two gigs of side-loaded content and two gigs of Nook downloads. Whereas with the Kobo, you have no such restrictions. You have four gigs of memory. Uh, you could use it any way you want. They don't have expandable memory via SD cards on the Nook. The Kobo has a hidden SD card, but it's not easily found. And in order to swap it out, you definitely need some advanced knowledge, knowledge on how to clone SD cards, which the average user has no idea. Let's take a look at the hardware. The Kobo looks very simple, looks very similar to every other e-reader on the market. It has a surrounding bezel, about a one millimeter gap in between the screen. Because of it infrared. Has, yeah. It has a perforated leather looking back, but it is indeed not. It leaves a lot of fingerprints, Rakuten logo on the bottom. Easy to grip though. Right. Lots of grip on it. Power button on the top, nothing on the sides, and micro USB port on the bottom for transferring data. And to a and status from indicator device. light. Yes. The Nook offers a lot different of a uh, appearance with its, um, it's like these little X's that are all around the device. Although this is a very, very, very thick bezel with an outer bezel as well. The outer, be the outer bezel only comes in this kind of old man candy bowl bronze. I don't know why. Uh, this is, they've made this color, it doesn't look that great. Uh, it is a nice piece of metal though, I don't know if it's magnesium or aluminum, I'm not too sure, but it is some sort of metal. You get the micro USB port on the bottom, the power button on the left, and uh, the Nook button, capacitive hardware driven button on the bottom. So I think the Barnes & Noble Nook UI is a little bit more intuitive than the Kobo one. Certainly if you've had other Nook e-readers in the past, this bottom half has remained consistent over all of the different generations. Kobo has pretty well had this menu system for about the last four years. It's dynamic, so whenever you open up new books, whenever you open up, say, a web browser, or if you buy new content, it automatically appears here on a home screen. Also, when you make notes, highlights, and annotations in books, those appear here on the home screen as well. So you can just click on that and you automatically will open up that book and check out the notes that you made. I like it because it's very, the Kobo is the only company that does it yep. and it's not static. And I, I kind of like that. With Barnes & Noble, it's very like intuitive about what's going on here. Library, shop, Nook readouts, you may have not heard of it before. It's pretty well a new program that Barnes & Noble has just unveiled uh, in the last month. Uh, what it is, is it's it feels like a half of a blog, but it's like author interviews. It gives you previews of new books coming out, gives you sort of these exclusives. So here's the two different store experiences. I find that Kobo's really kind of packing a ton of stuff right in a home screen here, whereas Barnes & Noble things are more spaced out you have the carousel here. Things tend to load pretty fast with Barnes & Noble has like a, like arrow keys here and they only show a few titles per screen. So there's not really a lot of things loading. 
here's the newsstand where you can get like magazines, things like that, college newspapers. They even actually have like a teens category here. So you can find out some of the YA stuff that's on the horizon. Whereas with Kobo, they kind of curated a little bit more top 50 books, top new releases, best of the month, great reads. All that stuff really never really changes, I mm -hmm. found. Like they don't really have like Man Booker Prize or you know, like the big literary contests. They tend not to really have featured lists built around that. But you can click see all and then you can check out like the top 50 books here. Uh, page turns are roughly the exact same speed. The nook is a little bit quicker and um, it just it refreshes a lot less. But the downside is that the nook has limited features and the responsiveness of the screen is terrible. I've already pressed and held that t two times and nothing happened. All right, so we have ways to add notes. We'll add a note. The way Kobo does their keyboard is unconventional. They have the Q above the A and it should never be like that. It should be a staggered QWERTY like that. You don't necessarily need this numerical row on the top because you can always just go to secondary keys and find it there. So I feel Most smartphones do exactly that too, right. right? They don't really have numbers there. You have to click capital letters and exactly. the number field. So we'll long press again if it will let me. So we have highlight can add a highlight and we also have share and share will allow us to share on Facebook only on both devices so we can share on Facebook and you can log in with your Facebook credentials and the final thing that both of these do is search um, this will have search in book Wikipedia and Google the Barnes & Noble will just search in book yeah so search for any word that you mention Anytime it's referenced throughout the book. Right. You can bookmark by typing the top, the tapping the top right corners. And if you press the double A button on, all th on both of these, you can do different things to change the font styles, font settings, line spacing. You can make them look drastically different. Um, everything changes live. The Kobo goes a step further and allows you to change uh, before and after, um, including weights and font sizes and you can make things really heavy or really light and you can click apply to apply those settings. Kobo always does this. It always zooms everything into the top left corner. We don't know why. The first time you load a, up a PDF file, it really does that. Yeah, double tap that twice to get out of there. The Barnes & Noble has no way to zoom in on anything. You can't pinch and zoom or double tap or choose any sort of zoom options whatsoever. The Kobo will allow you to pinch and zoom very slowly, I might add, with a thumbnail map of where you are on the screen. Once you let go, it takes a little bit to render and fully um, get the best quality out of everything. It is nice because you do get the ability to pinch and zoom on the Kobo. However, you can't long press anything. Alternatively, you can log press long press on the Barnes & Noble, but that does you no good because you can't see what you're reading or what you're long pressing. Yeah. Uh, they both have features where you can add bookmarks. You can jump around to like various pages here. You can look at highlights, lookups, and things like that. Not the type of stuff that you'd be using like on a daily basis. So we're in complete darkness. The e-reader's illumination settings are jacked to the max. Unlike a smartphone and tablet where the light emits from behind the screen, here, the LED lights are on the bottom of the Kobo and project light upwards. On the Nook, they're at the top and they project light downwards. Uh, this way, the light, because it's not shining in your eyes, it's shining down or up, that it's easier to read and it's you don't get sort of that melatonin suppression that you get from tablets and smartphones and many studies have said that this contributes to sleeping disorders, especially like in teens and kids. So, but that's besides the point. What we're looking at here is two screens. I would say that the Barnes & Noble looks a little bit more washed out. The Kobo, it, although it still has the same sort of brightness level as the Nook does, I find that things are more, a little bit more clearly and more defined. Peter, what are you noticing? The 
Kobo has the LEDs at the bottom. You can see here, one, two, three, four, five. They're at the bottom. You get the little gray patches in between. Top is evenly distributed. Alternatively on the Nook, you'll see that all the LEDs are at the top and you get these black domes over uh, the spaces in between each of the um, LEDs, but it's pretty much they're both evenly distributed. The Nook is a little bit more dim, even on its best, as best setting. It's also an off kind of blue gray, whereas the Nook, uh, the um, Kobo, sorry, on the right here is more of a white. So we got a blue gray versus white and just um, the LEDs are situated different places. Okay, so with Kobo, the illumination button is at the navigation bar here. This is exactly the same where the Nook is. So let's bring it down to like maybe 75% or so. There's about 75. We'll go with to Kobo, it actually tells you the percentage right. here. With Nook, it's just a scroll bar. And we'll go to 50, starts getting kind of dark starts to become unreadable. So try to find that even mix of not too bright, not too uh, dim so you can't see it, not so bright that you wake up everyone around you and that should be um, that should be good for you. We also have uh, Kobo's kind of patented way to turn it up and down with one finger on the side. Nook has no such options at all, so. So one of the last things I wanna show you here is extra. Meeting stats awards is something very unique to Kobo. They also have, and this isn't on the main screen, beta features and a web browser. But how do we get to the web browser on the Nook? Well, you gotta open up an ebook, you gotta click on a word, you gotta click share. Now this trick will only work if you're not logged into Facebook. Now this is kind of really washed out, it's kind of hard to see, but underneath the login button, it says forget password, help center, and create account. If you click on help center, it actually loads up a hidden web browser. So you've heard our thoughts, you've seen the glow light test, you've seen head to head comparisons, let us know what you think. Drop a comment on this video and weigh in on what e-reader that you think is better. And if you have any ideas for future videos, let us know. Uh, you could always visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash goodyreader. And for all the latest news, previews, interviews, and industry coverage, goodyreader.com is your online destination. And for Goody Reader, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.